What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you a little bit of action, some heavy hitter action. Uh, as you guys know, we will be showing you one Town Hall 9 raid, an epic Town Hall 9 raid. But we did have, I'll give you guys a quick background. This was not the potluck spin. We didn't want to wait an extra day. We were eager to spin. So we spun a 616 breakdown, a 40v40, and we matched none other than Dutch Force. It was an even breakdown too, so it was very, very nice. Huge shout to them. FFS getting the victory, 111 to 109. It was a very, very solid war. Good performance from both sides. We definitely struggled at, uh, at the Town Hall 9 game, but our heavy hitters definitely were able to pick up uh, the pieces from the beginning. Barely had any scouts, maybe like one, maybe two scouts. But if you guys see right there, as this was a six, uh, six Town Hall 11s in this breakdown, check that out. We had three 11 v 11 three stars. We'll go ahead and take a look at each one of those. Uh, we did have what four or five uh, 10 v 10s, but what we'll actually do real quick, we'll jump down here. I'm going to show you guys, which one was it? Was it this one? Yeah, I got, come on. You guys know I got to show you CRB. Mr. Max9 with no unlocked Lava Hounds. Uh, doing this base fresh, and he's really been favoring this attack lately. Uh, we've seen him do... Uh, I've never seen him use less than three Goms, I don't think. But we've seen him do the stoned entries. We've seen him do the Brimstone, but he's really been favoring this five Golem attack. So we'll go ahead and check it out. Again, guys, I don't... I can't... I wish I could. I really wish I could bring you guys... Um, like an attack strategy on what he does, but I honestly don't even know. Everyone in the clan is still trying to figure out how he even breaks a base down. Uh, I really wish he'd tell me. Seems like it's a big secret, but I, I don't. I don't even know. I don't know what he looks for. I honestly don't know. If I did know, I would definitely bring it to you. Uh, but definitely stay, stay tuned to the channel. Maybe we can work something out. Uh, but he's all, and he's bringing three jumps. He brings three jumps and one rage on this attack. He's usually always bringing bowlers uh, in the CC, of course. Uh, five golems. Uh, he uses a skelly spell. He'll, he'll bring a baby dragon or two. Uh, sometimes he he will in fact um, touch his balloons, but. For the most part, he's bringing hogs. He goes all ground and just brings the three jumps, makes it from one side of the base to the other. Usually does kind of like a, a naked queen walk. And I mean, look look at the look at these golems, you guys. Untouched. I mean, these are pretty much at freaking full health. You know, I mean, doesn't even bring doesn't even bring a, a heal spell for the kill squad. It's I mean, it's just utter madness. If you if you missed it, that was in fact. Um, a sub two minute rate. I think it was a minute and 48 seconds in total. CRB though, getting a fresh 9v9 six pack using this, this five golem attack. I don't, I don't even know what exactly we call it, but what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and jump into, uh, the town hall 10 action. And at the very end, I'll show you guys, uh, the 11v11 three stars. Good performance from our town hall 11s. We had Papa, uh, Papa got an 11v11 six pack. So we'll go ahead and check that out. And we have a new addition to the clan, brand new member. I believe this was his first war with us. Uh, also picking up an 11v11 three star. So future definitely looking bright over here, uh, especially for our, our town hall 11s. They have been wrecking uh, these anti these anti two town hall 11 layouts. Um, but anyway, we'll go ahead and check out this attack. An also new member. I want to welcome him to Fortune Steel Camps. Uh, taking on Cohen Warpro. Um, Co a big shout out to Cohen Warpro too. I've known this dude a very, very long time. He's actually a member with a lot of us in Fortune Steel when we were actually in Midwinters. If any of you even remember or even know uh, what that clan is. But huge shout out to him. But we got Camps doing an epic Queen Charge Hog Attack. We'll go ahead and check this out. And as you guys see down there in the troop bar, he is bringing one miner to this attack, uh, which is always good for cleanup, especially when there's a lot of storages inside the base, making sure you get that clan castle taken out, that kind of thing. Uh, but got a really nice double layer wall break, which is going to open up 
uh, the entire core. He can reach the air defense. He can reach the bomb tower. Of course, he can reach the queen. The reason why the air defense matters is it's going to help break the defensive ring. And right as queen was getting targeted by that single shot inferno tower, goes ahead and pops the ability just in time. So she is actually going to keep on going through this base. Uh, she's being on a wall to get into that core to take that can out. But here comes the hogs. He's bringing two. He brought uh, two rages for the queen and three heal for the hogs. That's kind of the traditional uh, spell comp that we're seeing on these queen charge hog attacks. And I do have one more of these to show you guys. Uh, but yeah, just like you would, I mean, you're using your queen similar to like you would on a kill squad where you have key objectives you want to take out, especially the enemy queen. And you want to go ahead and break that defensive ring so those hogs stay nice and tight uh, going through the base. And clearly this one is going to be wrecked. I uh, had a nice split there. Uh, had a bunch of hogs come on the backside of that wizard tower as the wizard tower was only hitting about two hogs while about five came in from behind. And look at that, wrapping it up with that three star. Again, big shout out to camps. The newest, one of the newest additions to the clan. Very, very exciting uh, to have him aboard and picking up a, a 10v10 uh, three star this war against a very formidable Dutch force. Again, big shout out to them. Now right, we're gonna go ahead and check out, yes, we're gonna go ahead and check out this attack from Cotton Eye Joe, gonna be doing a queen walk bitch attack. And this one, yes, this one was a cleanup. So we'll go and see, we were trying to hit it from this side for a while, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna be walking queen over here at three o'clock on the far right hand side. She's gonna go ahead and go up. As you guys see, all four of these air defenses are all on the left side of the base. So of course he's gonna go ahead and walk his queen opposite of the air defenses, just has a traditional, uh, which bowler flank and he does have a couple healers to keep that flank up wait till you guys see the work uh, that that flank puts in over there on, on the bottom left hand side but here we go jump going down jump and a second jump leading everything into the core has a rage and a heal and another rage right there in the core pushing that kill squad into the core of this base where they, where they have access to the wizard towers uh, the expos and and you'll see look at queen still going strong and uh, he still has queen ability as well. He even has a golem, a uh, golem, Jesus, a uh, goblin <laughs> left up uh, just to help out with cleanup. But look at this flank, like I was telling you guys at the start of this raid. Check that out. One healer is rip as he was coming uh, up on a couple of those air defenses, but one is still up and he still has all kinds of troops still left up in the core as these bowlers are trying to make sure that they can reach these defenses. Things starting to slow down a little bit, but the key thing on this attack, especially on the queen walk, we see it happen, uh, I mean, very often where the core group ultimately dies off, but you still have your queen ability and she survives the remainder of the raid. Uh, she went up and went ahead and took out that uh, builder hut up there at the top. But this queen, she is trying to beat through this wall. Once she breaks that wall, she can get the expo. She can go ahead and take out the cannon. Of course, instead of walking around the wall, she beats another wall to go ahead and get to the builder hut. But going to wrap it up and get that three star. But that's usually how these queen walk bitch attacks usually end. Uh, but Cotton Eye Joe, a.k.a. Mark, getting it done. Uh, big shout out to him. Here's the next three star I want to show you guys. This one coming from Suga E, a.k.a. Geo. He's been doing uh, another uh, queen charge uh, mass hog attack, bringing a baby dragon just to help funnel um, this queen so she goes exactly where he wants her to go. And nothing's even going to be targeting this baby dragon. Already took out a few defenses. So once the queen was taking uh, quite a bit of heat from that cannon, <laughs> goes ahead and drops down those healers to heal her back up and he is bringing nine wall breakers here comes the next baby dragon and just a couple archers um just to help set this funnel uh so this queen enters and gets to that core just like how we saw in the last queen charge attack uh where you try to make sure you get the queen and more than more often than not what you'll find in the core is a bomb tower which is what he's gonna be able to take out uh cc lure comes out uh, once those wall breakers pop uh, that second layer wall uh, has a poison waiting for it, goes ahead and takes it out. And on this charge, he's going to pick up both uh, bomb towers. Uh, so beautiful execution on this one. Gets three layers of walls popped. And you can kind of see the defensive ring already starting to get broke. 
and right here goes ahead and starts his hogs as he knows that that queen is going to be getting targeted by that single shot inferno tower can the hogs take out the it in time just in time as you already did use the ability hogs get that inferno tower down queen is still going to stay up uh, doesn't have ability for her anymore but she is going to be surviving the remainder of this raid still has one more heal spell uh, left to deploy with these hogs as he did go ahead and burn one up there at the top to help uh, the hogs um, make it past the king and on that tesla right there where there was a giant bomb but second uh has a nice split right there uh, third and final heal spell is down but again has a really nice split so these hogs down here are helping tank these defenses so the big group of hogs can help uh, get through this wizard tower and just like that uh, this is also going to be ending with just the queen but she can reach all the remaining defenses from over the wall uh, king somehow I don't even know king somehow manages to survive uh, the remainder of this raid last building down was that de storage huge shout out uh to geo getting that three star and as you guys know are we okay we have a friendly okay okay that'll work let's go ahead and back out of this <laughs> and uh we're back we're doing a, a friendly war with uh dark avengers okay let's get back on track here i want to show you guys this 10v10 three star from none other than tad wait until you guys see this attack um, doing the skelly donut check this out now there is a little bit of splash but if you look at it the bomb towers are actually just out of range of where those skeletons spawn so he's going to take out the enemy queen he's going to take out two air defenses and uh, the enemy clan castle so check this out uh, went ahead he's sending in his heroes uh, with just a wizard went ahead and, and uh, popped the wall uh, to help uh, take out some of these air targeting defenses. He's going to go ahead and pick up two archer towers. He's going to go ahead and get that wizard tower. And starting his Lalo nice and early down here at the bottom, where he has three big clumps of loons. He went ahead and took down that haste right there. And he has uh, that max hound sitting on top of that air defense. Uh, and remember, with the skellies, he already took out two ADs, only has two left up, uh, bringing in some more loons down here at the top. Uh, just to make sure that those that big group of loons stay right there in the core as these loons on the top uh, take care of those defenses up there. Still has one more heal spell, or still has a heal spell and one more haste left to deploy. Uh, I believe he brought four skeleton spells, a rage, a heal, and three haste uh, to help him push through this base. And as you guys see right there, he still has a hound that is uh, still doing a little bit of tanking with those point defenses. Uh, or that that dps coming from those two archer towers i uh, had to fight the sweeper but other than the tesla and the inferno tower not a whole lot uh that you're going to be doing to that many loons uh but incredible attack from tadpole doing the skelly donut uh it, definitely exposing the bases that have those um well there's no splash around the queen who nine times out of ten is going to be next to the clan castle uh but absolutely loved it now we'll go ahead and check out uh, this attack from Papa, and I'm going to show you guys the attack from AIM. Uh, we'll be doing his next. So we'll go ahead and check out this one. Was this the attack? One of these attacks, he didn't even know. Uh, it might have been a different one. Papa had two hay spells that he had left up to deploy. But I think his scroll bar was so long, so long he didn't even realize he had those two haste. We thought he DC'd. Ended up sw completely swagging. Didn't even drop him on the clan castle. Just ended up completely swagging. Uh, two CCs, uh, or, or um, end up swagging two hay spells. So let's go ahead and see if this, if I, I, this might, I hope this is the attack. Um, but yeah, just bringing in, just basically doing a CB Lalo. I uh, went ahead and broke into uh, this three o'clock compartment right here. Sent in all three of his heroes. Already popped the Grand Warren ability. Uh, Grand Warren ability. Still has his Queen ability though, as she is in fact going to be able to take out that Eagle Artillery. That's why he went and decided to enter in uh, over here at three, at three o'clock. Realized he could get a whole bunch of value, uh, take out enemy queen, take out the eagle artillery, the enemy CC troops, and also uh, pick up an air defense. And queen's still going, uh, but she's going to meet her demise uh, against that enemy king. But Lalo's starting up at the top of the base, dropping down two hounds to uh, anchor on that air defense up there at 12 o'clock. Two haste spells are down, bringing in more loons 
uh, to target the wizard tower and the cannon. Again, trying to keep that core group of loons um, nice and concentrated on these high HP defenses. While the loons on the edges go ahead and, and take those out. But Rage Spell is down. I'm pretty sure, guys, I am pretty sure that this is the attack where he ends up swagging these two hastes. Uh, we'll go ahead and see. Yep, this is uh, this is definitely it. Drops uh, uh, one of the haste right over the town hall to help push those loons into that infernal tower. And at this point, while well, about 15 of us are watching this attack, we're like, okay, is he going to drop his haste? Is he going to drop his haste? Okay, did, is he trying to just swag here? Is he trying to be the hero? Oh my god, I think he DC'd. He's going to fail. But look at, there's more loons in this clump um then meets the eye but check this out coming from behind the sweeper and look he still has those two haste spells just chilling down in the spell comp and check it out just like that you guys getting that three star and like i said he did uh 11 v 11 six pack this war taking advantage of these anti two uh layout uh, town hall 11s i'm telling you guys there's a lot of town hall 11s getting a lot of practice against these anti-2 layouts. And uh, what's happening is there is a bunch um, of clans that are obviously still running anti-2 because, despite what you say, 10v11 is still very, very difficult on a solid uh, anti-2 layout. But what that, what that does is that exposes... We'll go ahead and check out this hit from AIM. Um, what that anti-2 Town Hall 11 layout ends up doing is it exposes the base to something like an 11 11 3 star and we're slowly but surely seeing more and more uh, anti-2 star layouts getting 3 star. I mean, this war alone, we picked up 3 11 11 triples. That is absolutely huge. Uh, so, I mean, it really does beg the question, what are Town Hall 11 supposed to run? Are Town Hall 11 supposed to run anti-2 layouts to make it difficult for 10v11, um, but make it easier for an 11v11 triple? Or are you supposed to run an anti-3 star Town Hall 11 layout where it makes it more uh, where it makes it more difficult for an 11v11 3 star, but very, very easy for a Town Hall 10 to 2 star that 11? I don't know. I, I'm curious to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. It was something that you know I did want to talk about and bring up, uh, but people are still asking... Uh, in these CWL wars, what are the 11 supposed to build? Uh, I mean, I don't know, it's very difficult. I almost want to say that if you're getting a whole bunch, if your clan's getting double digit 10v10 three stars, I would definitely have your Town Hall 11s running anti three. If you're not getting a whole bunch of uh, 10v10 three stars, probably stick uh, with anti two layouts. Um, but I mean, it. I mean, it is kind of, it's almost like a rhetorical question at this point, uh, but just a beautiful uh, queen, uh, queen walk, uh, bitch attack, bringing the quad quake on this one, uh, but aim getting it done um, and still has that queen ability at the very end of this attack. So you already know with that queen ability alone, even if there's eight defenses still left up with that queen ability alone. Uh, you, you pretty much know you're going to get through that base, especially if you still have those healers behind her. Uh, but GG uh, to aim on this one. But yeah, let me know if you guys made this far in the video what you guys think Town Hall 11s are supposed to be running nowadays. So I'm telling you, these anti-2 layouts are just getting completely wrecked. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this was the final uh, to our pre-potluck spin, if you will. We spun a day before, still hadn't even break down. GG to Dutch Force, FFS getting the victory 111 to 109. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that, uh, hit that like button. Comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.